I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we are reading from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 2. So let's focus on verses 11 through 13. Elkanah went home to Ramah, but the boy served the Lord in the presence of Eli the priest. Eli's sons were wicked men. They had no regard for the Lord or for the priest's share of the sacrifices from the people. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 11 through 13. Now, a spiritual resurgence seemed impossible for the American colonies in the 1700s. Samuel Blair even wrote that religion lay, as it were, a dying and ready to expire its last breath in this part of the visible church. When the church leaders don't even think that revival is possible, that is a problem. And this was the setting before the Great Awakening, where America's soul was born again, so to speak. The church at large had become corrupt, and yet the Lord did not abandon His plan for the colonists, that is, those who were believers. He set into motion a chain of events which led to a spiritual revival. And ultimately, it led to the American colonists' resolve to fight for independence from British tyranny. America could use that kind of revival today. Amen? We can always expect opposition from the secular world. But what can we do when the worldliness seeps inside the church? How can we respond when religious leaders are lacking in faith and they are unholy in their lifestyles? What happens when purveyors of the light of the world are themselves full of darkness? Nadab and Abihu had been such men in Israel's history. And now Hophni and Phinehas displayed the same level of disdain for the Word of God, and hence they disdained the ministry jobs to feed his sheep. Yet the Lord did not abandon his people Israel. God was there in both judgment and in grace, when judgment began at the house of God. And there are many leaders in the church today who are purveyors of darkness. They add to and they take away from God's word when they're sharing the gospel. And by walking away from scripture, these people are destined to go one of two ways in terms of error. Number one, they either err by being more conservative than God's word demands, or They swing to the other side and become more liberal than His Word allows. All of this in order to suit their personal agendas. Furthermore, they lead people along the same heretical paths that they're on, paths on which the Lord never intended for His children to travel. So reading today's chapter, it may be easy for us to separate ourselves from these characters. After all, most of us don't hold the office of a priest, or do we? 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people to be His very own and to proclaim the wonderful deeds of the One who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. You see, the truth is God considers every believer to be a priest. Sure, we may never join a church staff, but God's calling remains for each of us to know God's Word, and to make it known to others. Setting aside for a moment the time that you spend in church worship services, how well are you at representing Jesus outside a church when you're out in the world? You see, in a church culture littered with Hophni's and Phineas's, the Lord has called us to be Samuel's. Consider us a challenge for us to faithfully serve the Lord, for the church is flooded with a sea of self-servers. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Groundworks Ministries operates entirely through financial donations from faithful people like you. And if you're being ministered to through the Bible teaching of Groundworks Ministries, and you would like to help us reach this generation with the gospel, would you consider donating to Groundworks Ministries today? Donating is secure and easy at our website. Check us out at groundworksministries.com.